also allow you to excuse me. They'll also allow you to go to a black and white or a sepia. A right. Lot easier. Or not not a lot easier, but the results will be far more profound. Right. So what I'm doing with just my general first tie lines on this is I'm just kind of creating a, a generalized highlight where my airbrushing has already brought up a color to a certain point. I just want to bring it up even further. I'm not really worried about like a final highlight or, or shadows or detailing that area. I'm just worried about bumping up my color and getting it, getting it nice and bright. And I'm just kind of following whatever color was already there. A lot of this too, if you work quick enough, it's almost like a, uh, like a wet blend. Um, you can correct little mistakes that you have kind of on the fly. What purple is that with paint? Um, this purple is a purple that you can't get because I got it at ReaperCon. It's called Carnival Purple. And if you were an attendee at ReaperCon, you got it for free. That. Yeah, um, but it's it's just a nice deep purple. It's it's not it's not anything too special. Problem is, um, Games Workshop had a warlock purple that was really cool, and then they got rid of it because they started a new paint line. And I haven't found a color except for this one. That's why I picked up like six bottles of it. That was a really deep purple to start with, because it's it's hard to darken up a purple and keep it purple. Um, but it's easy to lighten up a dark purple and make it look cool. So I don't know why they just completely got rid of that, but they did. Um, so so I'm just painting over those, those areas. And then you come back in, and you can kind of start doing some little tick highlights and stuff, especially on this because it's really bumpy monster skin. Um, you can just come back in, uh, do a little highlights over what you had and if you need to put some shadows in the top because sometimes there are shadows in the top of a model um, you can you can throw those back in and start building up the detail that you had on that part of the model um, this really is a kind of a touch technique you got to get the feel for it um, if you're not familiar with with blending techniques very much um, you might find it a little bit hard at first but the key is just keep your paint thin on your brush. Like if you notice, my, my paintbrush doesn't have a whole lot of paint on it. Um, but there is pretty good pigment on it because I haven't thinned it too much. Um, it's just a very flat layer of paint that goes over. Um, it doesn't need to take forever to build up the color. And how does it taste? Um, it tastes like paint. <laughs> um, the, the, the cool thing is I never have enough paint on my brush to really taste it. Anyways. Are you reshaping the, the brush with your math each yeah, time? Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I'll, I'll keep the point very good. Um, if you notice, if, if, you don't, if you don't reshape your brush often, um, it will start going haywire. Even these really good brushes, they'll mm -hmm. start getting that random strand of you know, little hairs going this way and that way. And so... When I, when I lick my brush, I'm always bringing that point back to normal. What size of brush are you using? This is a one, which is actually in most brush lines is probably a two because Raphael's are a little bit bigger. Um, I usually skip between a one and a zero. Um, all the freehand on the front of this guy was done with a one. So um, it's possible to get really, really tight, fine detail with a big brush that has a very pointy tip. And that, that's the key. You wanna, I like these brushes because they fill up with moisture and then you're using just the tip of it and that keeps your paint wet. We all know how hard it is to get paint from the palette to your model sometimes, especially doing little detail-y stuff. Um, it's just very difficult. So uh, having that little bit of extra mo moisture I think helps facilitate it not drying up on you. Um, the other thing I do is like I'll unload that little bit of paint onto the area that I'm highlighting up and then I'll lick my brush, and that actually uh, makes my paint a little bit thinner, what's left on the brush. And then that way I can kind of just kind of coax it into spots where I want, where maybe my blend wasn't so good or whatever. And I, I'm, I've kind of taken a little bit of that pigment power out of there, so it allows me to get a, a smoother blend. Um, on this, I'm, I'm going kind of fast, so it may not be perfect, but, uh, but I think you'll get the, the picture. Um, the cool thing is, once you get rolling on this, you can start doing all the areas 
building up all your highlights kind of uniformly. Like I said, I try not to have all my highlights exactly the same because I think it looks cool to have, obviously, up closer towards the face is brighter highlights, and then as the model goes down, it gets darker. And then if you have dramatic highlights, it might be really bright on this side of the face and dark on that side of the face. But I don't like everything the same all the way across the model. Um, it's kind of like the, the Jesus effect. When they show pictures of Jesus on the cross, the famous ones, his feet are in shadow and his face is in the light. The sun doesn't care about eight feet. It's going to be the same brightness on his forehead as it is on his feet, but it looks a whole heck of a lot better um, painted that way. So that's, that's where you got a little bit of art coming in. A little bit of artistic license yeah. on that to highlight the head. Yeah. Exactly. And as, as miniature painters, we are trying to, um, to force the viewer of your model to look at what you want the viewer to look at. And that's going to be the face because, I mean, everyone across the board, that's one of the few rules in, in painting that everyone will say the same thing. Oh, the face is the focal point. It's always the focal point. That's why models with their eyes closed are usually not a good idea to do, even though I did it with my model at Reapercon. Um, luckily, the, the pose in her face was looking away, so you weren't really looking right at the eyes. But usually you want, you want everything focused on the face. And thus, you create an effect with your painting to make them only look at the face. And that also works for your advantage. You can start painting stuff to go away.